board's uh, second meeting for February. Uh, first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. Will everybody please go in? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, let me get back in here. Agenda review. Does anybody have anything to add to the agenda? I've got a couple of things to take off. Okay, go ahead. Um, there are no animal control reports because one isn't due. We're still in the month of February. We're current on those. Um, and also, under other business, uh, we will not be convening as Liquor Control Board this evening. Okay. Uh, I, the only thing I want to put on there is I went up to uh, you can do it right now. It'll take long. Where the uh, state garage is being built. Yeah. Uh, did they discuss with you put any stones in on that? They did call. Uh, I called them the other day because we'd received the complaint. Yeah. And okay. it was muddy. So um, it's, uh, Kevin was kind enough to give me the name of the uh, the head guy up there. And I called and we spoke. And he apologized and he was going to scrape it and then put some stone in to try to. They put the four problem. inch stone right off Bushy Road. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how popular that's going to be when they start spring's work. I don't know what their plan is. I don't know. Uh, but it needs to be checked on. Yeah. Okay. Did they plan? Did they put four inch in there for now because that's the easiest thing to remove, or do they plan on putting something over the tops and using that as a base? Okay. Can it can't be out. left that way. Right. Now I can find out. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's all I had on that. I got. I'd like under Old Town Business a uh, quick LBRT update, just a few things to pass along. And then uh, I'll just throw it out there that we consider maybe moving uh, Colonel Roy ahead on the discussion just because of the drive time involved. Okay, then. That's right. under New Town Business. Okay, right? yep, yep. All right, we can move that. Is that okay, uh, Betsy? You can... Absolutely. All right. Um, and then I, if possible, I would just like to give an update from Northwest Regional Planning Commission. Okay, you want to add that under new business? Yeah. Okay. What was that under new business? Uh, an update from my work with the Northwest Regional Planning Commission. Oh, okay, yeah. Hit me if I forget. Okay, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Uh, minutes. Make a motion to accept the regular select board meeting minutes of February 6, 2024. A second. second. All right, motion's been made and seconded to approve the minutes. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Uh, now we go on to public comments that would pertain to uh, things that are not on the agenda. Okay, we're all set on that. So we'll go to expenditures. Do you want to do that now or do you just want to go? You want to go to do, oh, you, you want, can, okay, we, yeah, we yeah, probably should because we didn't really have a chance to look at these. Right. Yeah. Okay, all right, Colonel, yes, sir. General, <laughs> what I, I want to make sure I call you the right thing. You're bigger than I am. <laughs> uh, Colonel is, uh, yeah, fine. Colonel Jacob Roy, I am the facility. Oh, yeah, come sure, right up yeah. here. Sure, sure, right sure. here. Thank you. Um, so, Colonel Jacob Roy, I am the Facility Management Officer for the Vermont Army National Guard. Uh, so, I'm here tonight uh, at your request to talk about our uh, proposed um, work that we're in uh, subdivision that we're looking at um, uh, over off from. Well, right adjacent to the uh, agency of transportation uh, garage that they're that they're building over there. Um, so the uh, background uh, for this is the Vermont Army Guard is in the process of looking at consolidating 19 readiness centers across the state, two of which are in the Franklin County region 
right now. One at, um, uh, right in the middle of St. Albans, uh, uh, across the street from the high school there. And then um, uh, the other one is up here in the town of Swanton. Um, so the, uh, the current strategic plan for the Army Guard is to take those 19 readiness centers and strategically locate uh, replacements for those uh, in uh, different corners of the state. So we're looking at one right now, which is uh, currently under uh, design, and hopefully we'll start construction this summer up in Lindenville that will replace the Newport and Linden um, uh, readiness centers that we have in the Northeast Kingdom. Uh, the next stage is the one that I'm talking to you about right now is consolidating the Swanton and St. Albans Readiness Centers into one readiness center uh, right here in the town of Swanton. And then we're also looking at uh, Southern Vermont and Central Vermont as well. So um, the readiness center that we would be looking at here in the Franklin County, uh, we, we internally call it the Franklin County Regional Readiness Center. Um, potentially is going to be a 39 million dollar project that we would bring to the to the to the town um, estimated roughly anywhere between 50 and 70 thousand square foot building uh, with uh, uh, parking for soldiers military equipment and and so on the site that we uh, currently are are uh, We've already negotiated with the landowner and uh, have a purchase and sale agreement pending. Uh, it's uh, well, it's already signed, but it's it's waiting for to go through the select board uh, development or review board uh, review and subdivision approval uh, for 40 acres. So, and uh, just as a reference, I didn't bring enough copies for everybody, but here's a couple uh, um, just for. Reference, the AOT slot is just um, to the, uh, um, let's see that one. the AOT is just to the, the west of the blue block. The blue block is tentatively the uh, site uh, that we have proposed purchasing at this point in time. So we've gone through uh, several iterations with the legislature already uh, to uh, to secure the funding for this. It looks like we have the funding with other armory sales that we've been able to do. Um, we have uh, already testified to the, um, the Senate Appropriations Committee, the House Institutions Committee, and the Senate Institutions Committee, um, all of which seem to agree or, or approve of of this. Um, or support it. How about that? Did they support the, the project and all? Um, one of the reasons why we're trying to move on this as quickly as we can is I'm really, I have en already engaged with uh, some of our congressional delegation down in Washington to see if there is, is an opportunity to uh, get um, any congressional money uh, to support the project and start designing this project um this facility uh as soon as possible um of course it's all pending on the continuing resolution that's currently going on down in washington with uh um and uh, any of the other budgetary things that they have going on which seems to be uh quite staggering at this point um but uh if there is an opportunity and they do open up a window to see congressional ads that is the route of which we're trying to do um, this will allow us to fast track design and development of the project and hopefully maybe get a uh, project up here faster than what normal time frames would be. Um, this project currently is the Adjutant General's number one priority project for the Army Guard that we currently have. Well, what questions do you have? Lots of them. <laughs> That's why I'm here, sir. First, I, uh, you know, this is very, uh, could be very exciting, might present some good opportunities for the town as a whole, but, you know, we are giving up 40 acres of grand lists. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> it's in the Southern Growth District, an area that, you know, is targeted for growth. 
so it, you know it does fit in somewhat in that way uh, but the town uh, you know there isn't any municipal services in that area and that's one of the limitations to you know uh, the type of growth or the type of gr uh, grand list growth the town needs in order to support itself mm -hmm. in this day and age because our taxes are getting you know same everywhere but uh, you know it's a, a way to address that is to try to get more income uh, and without municipal services in that area you know it's probably not going to have the, its full potential and from a planning perspective uh, even not just for the town, Swanstown plan but a regional and a statewide plan that is a an ideal uh, area for you know that kind of development there you know to provide jobs and or affordable housing you know accommodation mm -hmm. of the two uh, but we're lacking the infrastructure and we're lacking the money mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah okay you know I'll be perfectly honest about it uh, <clears throat> there's a lot to be gained here I see uh, but you know how do we how do we finance it so this, so the town wouldn't be responsible for financing any of this project. I understand that. So, but we need have some basic needs too. Uh, you know, if we wanted to have see further development in that area, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we would need infrastructure. Uh, yes, I can't disagree with you on that. Okay. So that would, I mean, something that that my staff is currently looking at is where is the infrastructure and yeah. where where does it end where does it start right um what does the city of st albans currently yeah. have yeah and things of that nature there's a lot of questions yeah. yes you're right that are still on the table yeah. but this might uh, be i see this as being something that will get an answer to those questions and maybe a way of doing it and everybody would benefit, not just the, the mm -hmm. National Guard, not just the town of Swan, but, the, you know, this whole entire region would. Mm -hmm. I would agree with you. And I don't, how do the uh, rest of the members feel or do they have particular questions? I, I got just a few questions. As far as what do I feel, I think uh, this is a great great project i understand that you know it, it may compete about with some other possible growth out there but uh, that southern ghost dis district was identified almost 20 years ago now i see this as an opportunity and maybe in discussions you have if, if you said you're going to go down and talk to the delegations in dc is as your staff takes a look at you know the infrastructure and stuff if it's something you know we can talk with you and work with you and, and maybe help with that discussion with the our uh, delegation in, in Washington and I see that as an opportunity for us to help try to, to try to push that yeah. so uh, there, there's definitely interest in us seeing infrastructure go out there as a town right now we don't have the funds to make that happen but working with the delegation and and possibly this project uh, you know something might might come out of it i just want to quickly add that you know what joel's saying is what we should do so we should be working together because we can bring in some other partners here uh you know the local development corporation the regional planning commission uh you know the, the town could bring possibly bring those partners into play too so then we've got a really strong coalition mm -hmm. you know and if we were going to ask for federal funding for this project you know we we got a good case. I think we can build a really strong case, you know, but working together. Mm -hmm. And we bring our players in too. Is yeah. this, I know, I know you said you're talking with a delegation for federal money. Is that mostly for the design side? Are you going to see whether, because aren't these mostly uh, constructed with state funds? So it would be 25% state funds. Oh, okay. So it's 75 on the It'd be side. 75, 25. Yes. And for both the design and the construction. Oh, okay. Very good. And then you talked about the sale of other armories. Mm -hmm. One thing I think it's fair to say we have some interest yeah. in, in that facility. If indeed 
this you know all comes to fruition and we just want to let you know ahead of time that there is some interest we know Enosburg um picked up that facility don't know the details of of how that all went down but in the future if this goes gets funded and constructed um at least the board as i know it right now is just mm -hmm. someone interested in talking about you know what happens to that facility after yeah sure yeah it's on facilities that we have sold up to this point um uh the majority of them uh, with very few exception that actually had reversionary clauses written into the deeds um, were sold out on the open market. Um, and even the one for Waterbury was actually sold internally to the state. And, you know, buildings and general services actually bought Not that yeah, okay. um, for, you know, from the military department. So, yes, when our our you know, well, actually, technically by statute, we're required to seek fair market value for all of our sales because all of our sales turn around and go back into new infrastructure uh, going forward for the military department. So, um, you know, when we get, it's hard to say on timeline for when this would be. Like I said, I'm trying to accelerate the timeline by trying to seek, you know, congressional support. Um, it could be, you know, it could be seven, it could be 10 years down the road. It's, it's really hard to determine when we would be able to do that. But when that time does come, um, you know, that one of the things that we, that we do habitually is, is work with the municipality within there to, um, before it goes out on the open market. And, you know, because there's typically interest on the open market, there's, you know, sometimes the you know the towns can help you know promote like for example this you know down in rutland when we disposed of that property you know the city was was pretty excited to have a commercial entity go back into that property so that was uh you know that was a benefit to have the city help but you know with that as we advertise that that property down there so um there is a lot of potential there's a lot of different ways that we can you know we can look to sell these properties um so but the you know the key the key point is to try to get that value back into infrastructure to support the military uh, uh infrastructure machine so do you there's no uh what do you call that contract with this with this property where it goes back to the municipality no sir that that you check mm -hmm. okay do you have a fair market value price yet or is that something you're still establishing we uh we have not done that yet okay no, it, until we get closer to actually finishing construction with this with this project, uh, we probably won't look at um, estimating a fair market value for that uh, real estate up there. As you said, you're talking seven to ten years because you've got to get design funds, go through the design process, and then go after the actual milcon dollars. Well. Uh, yes, sir. So that's the that's kind of the tight timeline that I'm working on right now is right. I'm trying to get the acquisition for this property done because it, that really is the, you know, the state is supposed to be a title or a deed holder to the property before they get federal funding to expend oh, yeah. on design. So the window hasn't opened yet for seeking congressional ads. Um, again, I don't know if they even will this year, uh, depending on what happens with the continuing resolution. Uh, we're hoping that they do. Um, but as soon as that window opens, we, we anticipate, well, we don't anticipate, we will be submitting a request for design dollars uh, for this project. So at that point, we're going to be really anxious about having title to the property or at least the state will be because just design for this project is going to be over four million dollars right. of which 25 percent of it's going to be burdened to the state well i think uh, i mean quickly just to pull the board members that are here uh, I've had some discussions with Steve Bourgeois about this, and he sees the opportunities. I know that I can I can speak for him at least that much. But what's everybody else seem to think? I mean, it's something that we definitely would like to see, be part of, and 
Uh, absolutely, as far as I'm concerned. Yes. You know, I mean, we do have the things we, you know, like like I explained to you, but I think working together, we can make this even more attractive to our federal delegation. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, this is rural development, <laughs> you know. So we got a real strong yeah. argument here. Yeah, I I think that, you know, with with the, the Regional Development uh, Commission, um, or the Regional Planning Commission and and trying to, um, you know, pool the resources of multiple municipalities together, um, it shouldn't be, in my opinion, just, you know, my personal opinion, it shouldn't be that big of a lift to yeah. try to yeah. entice that. But, well, um, it's the best opportunity we've had, okay, by far. <clears throat> so, you know, we'd like to, basically, we'd like to jump onto it, you know. Colonel, or uh, Mr. I'd like to ask the Colonel just a question. Yes, sir. Um, if this is to fruition, seven, ten years out, how many um, staff would you have there full time on a full time basis, uh, roughly? Yeah. And then, of course, you would have weekend drills and whatnot. What mm -hmm. would you be looking at there? Yeah, so <clears throat> consolidating the two units together, there could be anywhere between six to ten full time staff members on a daily basis. Okay um fluctuating as it is uh and then uh, looking at the unit type that that would be moving in there but i would estimate probably six to ten on a full-time staff basis mm -hmm. and then it's gonna it's a two company uh unit so your uh drill weekend could be 200 250 personnel uh that that drill out of maybe more if they get more personnel if we get if our recruiting really gets jump started and getting going, then, you know, we could get a whole lot more, sure. you know, coming in there as well. Yeah. Um, so, but as a ballpark number, you know, um, like I said, two, 250, maybe even 300, if we're doing really good on recruiting, you know, 10, six to 10 people full-time Monday through okay. Friday. Good, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. And it will be, We'll be in touch. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we'll be back here for the subdivision at the DRB or the DRB board. So, um, even though the, the landowner's working on that one, but we'll be here to support them. So, and uh, yes, so yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good seeing you again, Colonel. Absolutely, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank good you. Time. Thank you. And if there's any questions at any time, please email me or contact me. I'll be more than happy to to uh, answer anything that you have. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks. Thank I'm you. I'll shoot you my contact info. So if yep. there's something that comes up and you want to get hold of a forward number, you'll have my info. Absolutely. I'm sure you could find me if you wanted to anyway. But yes, sir. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Have a safe travel. Yes. Thanks. Okay. Now we can go to expenditures and we'll start with the general orders. Make a motion to approve the general orders one one twenty four to two twenty twenty four. For the amount of for the amount of one hundred thirteen thousand three hundred eight dollars and fifty two cents. Okay. Well, we got a second. I second. All right. Both of made and seconded. Uh, I'm gonna give everybody a chance to kind of look through it. And, you know, we got any questions? before I call for a vote. I got a question on that. 16,664 overpayment, CoraLogic centralized REF. <laughs> must be a mortgage company, eh? Yeah, so it's um, tax payments. They lost the check, so I had to void the original check I sent back in November and send them a new check. It's the mortgage. It's like the mortgage companies that pays everybody's escrows. Okay. They, they overpaid a bunch of people, so I have to send the money back to them. But they lost the November check, so I had to reissue a new check to them. For okay. it's pretty much they overpaid people's escrows. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
probably an obvious question, but the health insurance that's per month we pay, 18404. Yes. Wow. Mm. Yep. Yeah. So, I, I can't remember what it was in the actual annual budget, but seeing yeah, it there, it's, it's going it to go up. Up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to go higher. That and everything else. <laughs> All right, anybody else got any questions on them? Okay, then all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, the motion carries. Uh, next one is the uh, highway. Kevin, how are you making it out? <laughs> Didn't have any problems in the last major yeah. snowstorm? <laughs> got a truck now. Yeah? Mobile, yeah. That same th same issue? It's uh, not regenerating. Yeah. I didn't diagnose it, and it was uh, the uh, engine brake. So I got a solenoid today. It seems, to, it seems to be working. He's got to come tomorrow and then reject that and regen it. Maybe we'll regen it. So. Make a motion to approve the highway orders 1124 to 22024 for $62,027.20. I'll second that. All uh, right, motions are made uh, to approve the uh, highway orders uh, for the dates and amount stated. Uh, you want a little more time or you got questions? Like just a minute to flip through it, please. Yeah, okay, no problem. No further questions from me. Okay, then all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Gary. Uh, library orders. Yeah. Oh, Alpha. Alpha. Okay, well, I'm going by this day. I'll make a motion to approve the Alpha orders from 1 1 2024 to 2 20 2024, no matter $4,662.28. I'll second it. All right, motion's been made to approve the uh, ARPA orders for the date and milk stated. Uh, those are not too many there. Has anybody got any questions on them? All money for the uh, rec center and in the trailhead. Okay, all those in favor? All right. All right. Right now we go to the library orders. I'll make a motion to approve library orders one one twenty four to two twenty twenty four for fourteen thousand seventy seven dollars and fifty five cents. I'll second. I'll second. Uh, motion's been made and seconded to approve the uh, library orders for the dates and amounts stated. Any questions? What's it? The dollar return. It's not like that. Two. Is it two for, for oh, like literally a, a dollar? dollar? All right. <laughs> that money came out of our repair. Is it repair money for the library? Did we have a line item in the budget? No. Yeah. Is it all gone now? Almost. <laughs> Okay, uh, any other questions? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Both and carry. Now we're going to payroll orders. I'll make a motion. Go ahead. I'll make a motion to accept the highway and general payroll orders dated 1 1 2024 to 2 2024 in the amount of $62,754.68. I'll second that. All right, the motion was made and seconded to approve the highway and general payroll for the date and amount stated. Does anybody have any questions on that? If not, then all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. The next one is the library payroll orders. I'll make a motion to approve the library payroll orders. From 1 1 2024 to 2 20 2024, now $17,807.80. Uh, 
I'll second. All right, motion to approve the payroll orders for the library for the dates and amounts stated have been made and seconded. Any discussion? No, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. You got anything else, Kevin? What's that? Yeah. Okay. Um, turn on the new truck. It's all built. Just waiting on the right one. Um, instead of calling my point, it should be a mark or this, this month. Okay. This month? Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully see that truck probably be in the door. You going to trade that? Uh, Bob or what? I'll get to the, that one or the 2000 Bob International. I think the 2000 Bob, that's the one where. The okay. one you have more trouble with. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all <laughs> there. Because uh, it's what? That, we're, that we're truck? Not, we're not trading it. Okay. We didn't. It wasn't, didn't wasn't part of the. No, so you're going to outright sell one. Yes. But the truck that's left is going to be the spare truck. Yes. Yeah, I think it, you know, should really have a good conversation about which one is going to put some repairs in the 2012 yeah. and stuff like that, too. So, uh, seems like that, to put some brakes on that problem with that Volvo, it just can't get rid of it. Well, if, I think if we were running the 2012, the way we use the Volvo, I think we'd probably have problems with the emissions. Too. Yeah. It's, well, yeah, it's your decision to make. History, you know the equipment, so. If you look into the history yeah. of 2012, when we were running it steady, it was every year we were putting thousands of dollars into it. So. Yeah. yeah, every year. Every year. <laughs> you could plan on it. Four or five thousand. Then on, then on the hook, four or five times. Yeah. Something we get to look into. Also, I'd like to uh, be okay to buy a chainsaw. We had one of our chainsaws. And it's, that one there was back in 2000 when we bought it. And if I may give up, then I'd like to replace that one. Yeah, it's probably seen better days. Um, it's not running now, so. <laughs> it's seen better days. Yeah. I haven't had any highway complaints, have you? Uh, no. Well, so far the winter hasn't been too bad. No, it hasn't. Yeah. So oh, you're saying I'll so? I'll the third of the, third of the sand right now. Oh, not very much liquid. Things go good, then you won't have to buy so much this year. <laughs> I know. You got a ways to go. We're yeah. not all the way yet. I know. Yeah, I'll make a motion to change. Yeah, I'll make I'll make a motion to have the purchase of a new chainsaw. Okay, you want to make a yeah. uh Cody's gonna make a motion to add a, uh, buy the new chainsaw. I'll second. All right, motion been made and seconded to buy the new chainsaw. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Don't overspend. <laughs> Don't get it on Amazon. Though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Thank Thanks, you. Thank you. Thank you. Have Have a good night. All right. New cow business. Okay. Uh, Betsy, you're on. Can I come up? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> come right up. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. All right. So, uh, just a couple updates. We just rolled out all our summer programming. Um, so uh, we're getting a lot of great um, feedback about that. Um, people are, we've had what, 25 people register currently uh, for some of our programs. So I uh, just went out, what, yesterday? Mm -hmm. um, so good stuff. People are looking for opportunities for uh, summer programs and we've got quite a few of them. Um, we did have a little bit of a <clears throat> maintenance issue at the rec department. Uh, the ground was so frozen and the water had no place to go. So it decided to come into uh, the building. Um, 
So we do have a maintenance report that you're welcome to keep. Uh, currently, there isn't any issues right now. I think we don't really have proper drainage around the rec facility. Uh, so that's something we'll have to look into in the future um, to put some proper drainage around the rec facility um, to alleviate any more issues. Um, it's just currently wet. It's dried out. Um, but it was just basically in the office uh, boardroom area and then into uh, the side room where we keep our, you know, like supplies and our safe and stuff. Yes, yeah. that's you. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, she's safe. Can I, can I jump in on that? Yeah. I, I oh, would, yeah. And I, Joel and Eugene did come by. Uh, of course, Eugene was built the facility at one time. So, uh, he stopped by and kind of evaluated the situation and then Joel had popped in to uh, do his Meals on Wheels and uh, Nicole kind of grabbed him and you can go ahead and report on that. Yeah, what I would like to do if, if the board's okay with it and if the rec department's okay with it is I'd like to bring Kevin over there and take a look because I think we could very easily install what I call French drains. Mm -hmm. We did it on... Uh, um, near the elementary school on uh, Bushy Road or Bushy Street, um, where you, you put a tile in and then you, you run a pipe under the ground for 40, 50 feet or more with a stone. And I think that would take care of their problem and be something that would be fairly easy to do, but estimate the price for the materials and maybe be a project that we take on. You got to go both sides or just one side? I think I would consider both sides that's a real kind of low area and it doesn't have no gutters mm -hmm. that dumping off the eaves yeah it we does have we've got yeah. gutters yeah but you can't get the water very far away right. from there it's, yeah so it's not sloped it. right so you catch it yeah, and you let it go it, in yeah. the ground yeah and the village has come in at um because we wanted to pave the back the parking lot um and they were like there's no drain engine here so they the village is aware that there's like no drainage going through the rec facility so um it's gonna cause issues yeah uh of course probably won't get any rain next summer we got grounded last year uh, as you know how it is. <laughs> but no it seems like yeah they i, I don't have a problem with uh, take them, have them take a look at it. Can trust me. We can estimate some materials. And... Yeah, because I hate to put a lot of money into that until final decisions are made. What the you know what the future is going to be. Right. You know. Yeah, it would it would be relatively yeah, inexpensive. Yeah, it would be relatively <clears throat> inexpensive, and and it should address the issue of yes. the water going in the building. <clears throat> yep. Right, yeah. and then it you know putting in proper drainage tiles will help with our field too. Yeah. Not just I mean that building's not really going to go anywhere. Right. So we have to keep make sure it's well maintained. Um, and also it'll help, um, with the drainage from our rec fields too. Um, so yeah, I'd appreciate that. Having someone to come take a look at it would be nice. Uh, the town did come over and help us with our, uh, um, we had a pipe <clears throat> that kind of broke off from the playground. So they came over and, um, put that back together too. So we thank the town highway department for coming over to help us out with that. So, um. That should be all set. Yeah, so uh, moving on. The only, I just gotta get my stuff open on my phone, sorry. Uh, kind of the one of the things I wanna talk about um, from our last meeting in January um, is uh, some sort of continuation plan for the ARPA funds. I know that we as the rec department and the town do not have any sort of anything in writing about the funds, so it would be nice to have something put together um, so that we know that the funds will be allocated to um, the Swanton Rec Department. Um, I don't uh, know if that's done yet or there's, if it's... Uh, there's some changes. I don't know, Brian. It's just... Uh, yeah, there's... How do we have to do that? I, okay. um, the rules of ARPA... <laughs> was that um, you know, the, the funds have to be committed by the end of 2024. Uh, but by the federal government, committed means contract signed, ready to go, which we're not at that point. And we're not alone. Many, many of the municipalities that get this money that are faced with the same problem. So our understanding, Kathy and I uh, have been uh, 
working with the, the people that uh, the expert on ARPA for Vermont works at Vermont Leagues Association. Katie. 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 Thanks, Katie. Um, and this sounds completely off the wall, but <laughs> here's what we need to do. Uh, the first meeting of March, which is going to be our organizational meeting, I'm going to have a resolution that you're resolving that you're going to be using the ARPA funds to fund the operations of government for this year. So that your operations of government will be running this surplus. And then we can use that surplus. That sounds, I mean, in the old days, if you did something like that, uh, you'd probably all be getting arrested. But Congress has passed the law to allow that to do that because they know that these towns can't spend it fast enough and they don't want to be faced with taking the money back. And so. the operation of government is the town? Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. the town will be the operation of government of all the ARPA funds? They were going to use them for operations of government, creating a surplus. But not earmarked year. for certain projects. Well, we'll still but, have them earmarked. Yeah. In, in, in our town report, don't we show that it's earmarked for yeah. rec yeah. and how much right. has been? Uh, That's right. Yeah, so actually, okay. it, it actually shows it. So mm -hmm. in yeah. that surplus, a year from now, there should be a surplus yeah. equal to the amount that's ARPA. Approximately, what the ARPA money that's left because we'll spend and some during the year, right? So, but that will be you know the surplus, and then uh, that would be earmarked to go to the various things. So, um, hoping that Katie gets us the stuff in writing so mm -hmm. that we're sure that she's already sent the draft of the resolution that needs to be done. Uh, it does sound a little convoluted, I'd be the first to say that, mm -hmm. but that's uh. A way around this problem that everybody is facing now. Okay. And at the present time, the town only has two things it's committed to. Right. Uh, you know, because the motion's already been made and it's in right. the record, and that's uh, correct. And uh, the real Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, I did see it in the book. Yeah. Uh, I know we'll discuss it more in March, but so we'd have to spend a million dollars because that's our uncommitted. It's committed to rec, but our unspent ARPA unspent. funds right now, right. to me, it's close to a million dollars. Right. So would we be able to expend that out of the general ledger? Yeah. But we can't, can we do it with highway? Does it it's matter which funds? It said operation it? of government. Operate, all okay. operations of yeah. government. So when you put it in the operations of government, it can be used for anything within the municipal? We have to use it to operate our government until it's spent. Yeah. But, and then, and then and we'd have a million surplus. dollars surplus that we would be able to carry go over, spend it over. for those things that we said we were going to with ARPA right. money, I think is what they're saying. Okay. Yeah. So what's yeah. wrong with the town? Yeah, that's that's very interesting. interesting. ARPA money on operations because they want them to get rid of it, basically, yeah. is what it is. Right. Because yeah. they don't want to have to take any money back. Right. And the, they came up with this resolution to, we could use it for the operation of our government for the next year right. until the end of 2024 which we budget for but then our surplus would go to the things that we had earmarked for okay mm -hmm. now even just the general fund the uh, budget in this year uh, the proposed budget is 1.5 million so we could if, if it was a problem using it in the highway I and mean, the general fund would cover it as well so mm -hmm. we've got room either way it's just very odd. Yeah. Because yeah. Kathy came running in my office. She's got to come out and listen to this. <laughs> and then they yeah, explained it. Right. I said, I'm not going to do it. Right. <laughs> 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 the color of money. Yeah. Even. Well, I mean, you're audited so often. That, yeah. You know, I know. It's, it's just that it's just not a normal way of conducting it, right. spending the money, oh, I guess. Yeah. But it's their way of getting it earmarked and taken care of. Yeah. And then. They're pre they pretty much, uh, what I get is the government pretty much wants to be done with this. Well, they'll claw back the money. If we don't if we spend that money, right. they will and take they it back at the end of 2024. And they don't want yeah. to take it they back. They don't want to take it back. Right. They don't want it back. Because it's well, too much paperwork uh, for them to take it back. <laughs> I suppose the board could pretty much spend it. 
any way they really wanted to, except for what's committed when you get right down to it, but I, that's not what's going to happen. So, I mean, some projects take time. Yeah. And I'm glad the state understands yeah. that. Yeah, you know, so. they're not making us spend it so quickly that we can't make proper decisions and, right. you know, right. for the future, as Earl would say. Okay. Um, so my next thing is, um, I know that we've, obviously the rec is town, uh, vi town funded, but village owned. So I don't know if any conversations been had. I know we've had conversation with the village mm -hmm. about um, the property. Are they going to, we need something in writing stating that. Um, yeah, there was some discussion about a lease, I think was right. probably the easiest way to do it. Yeah, and that's in the minutes. September, yeah. September of 2022 um, is when that was discussed and the village said they're interested. I think it went into the inter executive session, but they've never seen any paperwork or any further discussion. Well, it's, it's in the minutes that um, either when the, I guess, um, when we're ready to build, when we're ready to go, they will enter into a 99 year lease. Well, I don't know if maybe we should just do it just because we are town funded. Um, why can't the town own the everything? Choose for rec. I would yeah. think it, it would be in the town mm -hmm. and everybody, because the village in this case is part of the town, to get get that into the ninety nine year lease. Just just because it is land that is used for rec right now. So if they yeah. if the village were to change their mind, which I don't think they will, and I'm not even entertaining that but it just to me it makes sense to get that that into a lease if the village is willing to do it i think the reason that even had to be done in the village name is because they could take property on without going to the voters back when that, was, that property was offered up to a wreck that was the my understanding of leon babby had told me years ago that hmm. it belonged well, actually to the swanton high alumni association well originally they got that land from Swanton. The land we're oh, talking about. Land we're talking about. I'm talking about yeah. the whole. Right now, I'm talking the, the Swanton deal. line piece because right. mm -hmm. that was done when I first moved here. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, it looks like a lease is an alternative, and I, you know, I, I guess I agree with Betsy. I don't see why we just don't get it done. I mean, okay. it, I even if, even if it's a long time where nothing ever happens, it's still like we got to make this drainage investment. There's going to be other things that we're doing there anyway. So, mm -hmm. and it gives you. If you end up doing some bonding or whatever, you're going to have to have some kind of uh, a lease on that property. Or you ain't going to get financed. I mean, we can't really yeah, do yeah. anything with infrastructure in that yeah. on that on the rec yeah. currently because the village owns it. Yeah, to give you an idea, where the bank is in the lower parking area, that's pretty much the dividing line between town property that is rec property and the property the village got when they added on to that space. So you're saying that... The, the upper field, ball fields... That's, that's town not, property. That's not... A, I don't believe that's that's village property. I no, it is village No, it is village property. It's all village. Oh, it's all village. Two? It's okay, it's two different lots then. Yeah, it's two different lots. Okay, sorry. Yeah. And it, to me, it makes sense to try to get a lease. Yeah. For everything. For everything. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll talk to Bill. Yeah, and then, you know, that lease would... Have, the thing that would be in there is what's going to be acceptable because you know the the village is still the owner but when you lease something you can put conditions that you know if they want to make the con main condition is going to stay recreation right yeah, for outdoor you know, right. records yeah. but you know if you want to do repair work and stuff like that you know mm -hmm. that's going to that should be in in a, in a really good lease especially if you're going to do it for 99 years So you'll talk to. I'll talk to Bill. Okay. The yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Let's try to you know try to get something done. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to have that done. Um. So moving on. Um. Uh, so we did expand the RFP for the grant writer. Uh. We didn't really get any applicants. Um. So uh, we took the RFP from Brian and uh, Nicole and I came up with the list and then Nicole um shared it out with um. 
Northwest Regional Planning, um, Vermont Rec and Parks and Rec, um, Franklin Grand Isle Partnerships, ACH Cares, um, French Port Boron, Facebook. Um, we did hear back from, we did get one applicant from the Cambridge area so far. Um, and then we did hear back from, well, Nicole reached out to Northwest Regional Planning um, and then Catherine Dermetric did get back to Nicole about a uh, red, it's called REDI um, grant that uh, Northwest Regional Planning has from grant writing. Um, and they were um, very receptive about helping us because this is what they do is um, grant, write, um, grant writing. Um, so this grant is up to $6,000 and they do grant writing consulting um, and technical assistance for uh, funding programs. So um, we can get more information about that, but I think uh, they're a great local partner and we might as well utilize them. They're very familiar with what we do here in Swanton. Um, they're familiar with the rec department, so it's kind of... Um, so you're going to go for a grant for 6000 to pay the regional planning commission to have their employee do the grant ready. How successful are they? Really, that, you know, that's, that's something that's important. It's, it's a program to explore, to, to, build, to build capacity, um, to take what we have and to build into more, so that if we decided to go with, a, with just a, a, a specific grant writer, if we decided to use their service that they're providing for grant writing, it's just another additional uh, resource that should be looked at. Um, when is the date for uh, the RFP? It must be coming up, the fight for the grant. It, the 16th. It was on Friday. Oh, okay. Friday. All right. And we only received the one. That's right. Yeah. So um, we received this one uh, so far. I haven't had a chance to review it. Okay. Everybody should have handed to me. Everybody should have a copy yeah. of it for you to review. Um, uh, if you go with the Regional Planning Commission, uh, how long is it going to take to get that in working up and running? How long is it going to take before you know if you get the grant or not? It'll all be something that we'd have to explore more. You yeah. know, just different avenues to look at as we were looking, you know, to fill the RFP. We can obviously gather more information and share it with you electronically as we receive it. This is just something we thought before the meeting, so. Well, it might be a lot of alternative, I guess. We haven't really got a lot of. But it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna prolong getting somebody on board. Probably. Yeah, it could prolong getting someone on board. Um, so just as long as everybody understands that, it's, you know, maybe it's the right thing to do. I mean, and not to say that this grant writer isn't. You know, we just haven't had the opportunity to right. review a lot okay. of this information. Yeah. Um, and just to kind of see, uh, she yeah. did give a lot of uh, yeah. valuable information. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, 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 I think it could be an opportunity to sit down and speak with her a little bit about it. Um, but I'm looking at some of her, her work. This will be a lot of money, a lot more money than what she used to, but uh, maybe she's quite capable of it. I, you know, I don't know. You have to talk to her. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so she raised over four million dollars. Uh, just looking at her, her professional um, accomplishments yeah, could, quite be, impressive. could yeah. be somebody that would be very yeah. Um, yeah. valuable to to the project. So, you know, I guess that's right. up to the committee to make a yeah. recommendation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's nice to have someone within our community roots that mm -hmm. understands our work, but it's also nice to have someone from the outside looking in to kind of see things that we don't see yeah. um, and kind of like Less pull Less Yeah, players. exactly, exactly. Um, so then, sorry, I do have a few more things. <laughs> um, so I just didn't know, I know that we've been pretty silent and not really having a lot of um, conversation about the um, rec, the future of the rec department, and I don't know if it would be um, 
appropriate for me to speak at the town informational meeting about kind of where we're at, um, what we want, you know, where we're moving forward to. Um, I don't want the community to think that we put this to a halt because in no way have we. We just understand that there's a lot going on in our community right mm -hmm. now. And we don't really think it's appropriate time to like bring this to, you know, you know, throw this at them right now, not to say that it's not going to happen. I think it's a great opportunity. We want our community to get excited about this opportunity. Um, and I just want the community to understand that we haven't, we're not just stopping the process. We're just kind of taking a pause at the moment because we know there's a lot going on. Um, and we want to make sure we get the attention we need from the community. And right now, I don't think that attention we're not gonna, we wouldn't receive the attention that we needed because it's in other areas right now. Um, but I just would like the community to know that we're still here. We haven't forgotten about this. We know it's a need for our community um, and we want the community to be excited about this. Um, and also we would really like to um, have a community forum um, to kind of get the community together to have a discussion to really deep dive into where we are at because a lot of people you know we've said a lot we've done a lot but we really haven't discussed it a lot openly with the public so i think it's really important that we get the public more involved in this conversation um bring them in so we can kind of openly talk about it um positive negative we want to hear it all because i think um everything that the community has to bring forward is an opportunity for us um, to kind of evaluate the the process um, we've done a lot of work so far and i don't want that work to kind of stop right now right here i want it to keep moving forward we have the momentum and i really want to kind of push it forward um, so i just really want to start maybe april or may have a public forum um, to kind of really start the conversation kind of i want i want to hear i i know the community has a lot of negative right now but there's so much positive happening in our community and i don't want people to forget what that is um well it's a very valid uh, point that she and that, you know i share that same concern about a lot of issues uh and a, and you're going down the right track i, I you know people need to be more aware, more involved. Uh, I, you know, a lot of things are going to be difficult, and maybe a lot of things are not going to ever be affordable. But we always need to stay together and work together. Uh, and along that lines, I think if you're going to do a presentation like that, uh, you should also to show the community that you support them. That you know, we're not shutting down this project. It's, it was never the. Uh, the board's intent, especially mine, to shut this project down. But I think we need to step back and see what we can get for other f avenues of funding mm -hmm. so that people can see that there is some light at the end of the tunnel. And that shows support for the community. Yeah. That should also be an important part of your message because it's, you know, people need to understand that. You know, we're trying to do the right thing, we're trying to make it affordable. You know, we know their needs are there, they're legitimate. We're not arguing that. Uh, but we just can't afford to do it the easy way. Yeah. And I think you're going to get a lot more support from the community if that's part of your message. I mean, I guess the message comes from the years that we have come into the community and given a very minimal budget. We've kind of, we run on, on a lot of nothing, but create this big opportunity for our community. We never stopped um, programs through any of COVID, nothing. We just keep plugging away with what we've got and we're not going anywhere and we keep running on this minimal budget and we have great staff and and board that really, um, you know, advocates for our community and really make sure that, um, you know, we're giving to our community what they need. We're trying to fill all the gaps in our community along with our great partners. So um, we're going to keep plugging away no matter what, but um, we're running out of space um in order for us to grow and and as earl says plan for the future we need a little <laughs> bit more space or well, a whole no lot question. more space that's, that's not debatable uh well did you want to do something at the informational meeting or do you want to do your own informational meetings well i can just I, didn't know as, oh, a, as a board member can i 
Yep, go ahead. Yep. I think we got to keep this informational meeting related to the March ballot. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I, you bring up some great points because the one thing I think people don't understand right now is this pause is all related to the whole financial piece because we know everybody's tax and I keep hearing, well, and we're going to get this community center, you know, three to $5 million. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> I said, no one has talked about a bond vote right yeah, now. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. So that's, I think, the message that, you yeah. know, part of the message it needs to be. But I don't think this informational meeting is, is quite the yeah. right time because it's up. That to me, this meeting is related to the ballot items in discussion because we're just going to confuse right. even more, yeah. I think. There is a lot on the agenda because of the police issue for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I, I would. Yeah. To me, well, it should be related to the March vote. This and, and that's appropriate. And I can understand. We don't want to open up another discussion that in this information thing because there's a lot more important um topics and, and warrants on the agenda that we need to address and um there is a lot of great information in the town report so i think i encourage people to read the report and then uh, april or may we can roll out our own forum so that people feel like they're involved and we haven't um forgotten about them but we're trying to um respect the fact that um we need to explore opportunities um to defer the cost to our taxpayers and that's all i got <laughs> so uh going from here you guys are going to review this resume yeah and that's the three of you yes. and you know <coughs> if he feels uh you know something you want to do then you can come back to the board for approval uh yeah. And we do have some, um, like our, our fundraising committee, we do have some community at large members, but who was coming, who was going to be part yeah. of that for the select board? Well, he's not here tonight, but Steve had worked for the hospital when they did fundraising. Right, so yeah. So he's been involved in that, and, you know, he might be a, a pretty a good, good resource. Okay. But he's not here. Well, I think he <laughs> expressed interest in January. Yeah, um, yeah he I mentioned mean, it. I know yeah. Cody's our representative, yeah. but I mean, I, I mean, either way, I'm fine with it. I mean, I know we, I, we have a few community members, so we can start rolling that out. Um, uh, I guess the thing to be to uh, contact uh, Steve and yep. you know, because what? How do you guys feel about it? Just because he had that experience working, I think he might have some connections and the, yeah. the experience. Yeah. To, yep. to, yeah. Definitely. So I guess, you know, let him know that the board feels he's the one that should be a, a part of this committee. And we'll go from there. Yeah, absolutely. Then, you know, are you going to advertise for uh, citizens or then yeah. how many from the rec commission? What did we say? Uh, three community at large, one from the select board, and, and I think two rec board. But maybe one right board in your executive director. <laughs> <laughs> I'm two rep board and still the executive director because that's a committee of seven. I'm pretty sure she's going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, Steve, Steve is interested in the job. I think he'd be, he'd be the best yeah. fit for that yeah. right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you start doing those things, then people get an idea that plans are being made, you know. Yeah, Gets more information sure out there. Forget anything. No, nope, that's all I got. That's it? I all think right. so. I think that's everything I brought from the last meeting. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be in touch. You too. Okay. Update on the basement repair in the Swanton Public Library building. Okay. <laughs> um, the... Um, the big items of the historical society have been placed back into the bay into their room and heather do you know if the small stuff got moved over the weekend or i no, it's still coming it's yeah still, most of it has been moved over it has been moved over yeah um, um the uh, uh, christina and i went in friday afternoon <laughs> to measure to see about getting some runners uh, but we determined that the rest of the stuff had to be moved in so that we could measure more accurately. I can let you know tomorrow morning. Okay, that'd be fine. Because um, we were closed Monday. 
Right. I think they were going to do more moving. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, so that's um, um, just going to get some, uh, we'll look at getting some runners there. Um, and uh, uh, other than that, uh, then uh, for now, the, the work in the basement is complete with the exception of connecting into the storm sewer for the drainage system, which um, we've had a second, or there was another meeting with um, um, Dean Scott at the village. Um, and um, he's uh, given us some options where to uh, feed both the elevators sub pump, which is going into the sewer, which we can divert that, and uh, and then this new sub pump, um, divert it. Will have to involve boring through the wall of the foundation of the library, and then. Um, looking to seek out one of the storm drains. The storm drain in the parking lot, uh, which is the longest run, um, is probably the, could be the better route to go. Uh, and that feeds into the storm sewer in the street, so that's allowed. Um, and uh, I have been in contact with uh, Rich McVicker of the church, the church parking lot, and basically left him a message and said this preliminarily, this is the route that we're looking at, and we'll get back to him when we get more information and see what needs to be, you know, just done. So um, I'll be meeting with Kevin, um, probably won't be this week, I'll let you know that because I've got to get a PowerPoint and get ready for Monday night, but we'll be meeting to decide just how, when, and where we do. The other place we could send that pipe would be, uh, it's a shorter run, would be um, right to a drain that's on the corner of First and Grand Avenue. But there is some um, concerns there that we have to, um, there's some probably a gas line, water, uh, water line, um, but uh, that can be worked around. But the biggest concern um, is dealing with the traffic. And uh, they don't pay attention to flag people out there. You're going to need blue lights. And, it's brutal, and it's brutal. So, um, so we're we're still exploring those options, and hopefully by the end of next week we'll have a decision which way we're going to go, and we'll get that process started. Uh, so that's what we've got for now. I have a question. Yeah. So is that why the flooring was not put down? Is it because of a sump pump connecting? No, uh, the flooring was decided not to be put down just to make sure that the, the drainage system works, um, which um, we uh, uh, feel that it will, but, um, but that was not the reason. Um, the, uh, initially, we were going to put down a tile on that floor. Um, actually had it ordered, but we've canceled that um, because it was determined that that would not be uh, feasible going on to that floor and okay. so it would probably if anything goes on the floor when it goes on it would be a, um, a cheaper grade carpet in case of another leakage but um, we're quite confident that drainage system plus other improvements we've done will help and hopefully we won't maybe Earl's weather prediction of the summer will be <laughs> accurate <laughs> be dry or even summer. linoleum maybe put down pardon me even linoleum put down or, well yeah something that's not so yeah. 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 yeah what we what yeah. we want to do is get friendly. get through getting the system hooked up and seeing what a year does yeah because yeah. if we put anything down and you get moisture again and it comes undone then we well, have my just... only concern is what's in that room is more expensive than the floor that would have been put in all the antiques and our stuff that are in there is very valuable. You know, it's kind of like we're risking that, they did block, but we're not risking they, the floor. Did they block it up, Heather? Um, block it up? Well, put something underneath it. So I, well. I, I was wondering if we could do that. I, well, I, I was thinking about idea. that. I mean, just in case. So. Yeah, because when, when you do all the work mm -hmm. that needed to be done, you never know how it's going to come out. You're right. <laughs> Because yeah. you plug one hole, sometimes it puts a pressure on another, mm -hmm. and then you don't know where it's coming out. <coughs> so, yeah, I would love to see if we could maybe elevate some of these um, display cases or anything like that, just even temporarily until, like you said, we know in a few years if it's really going to be. Because I'm still working on a new space right now, mm -hmm. and um, I did not get onto the ballots for this year, so. I've got some time to uh, work on the grants 
and try to secure this building hopefully in the next year or so. But I don't want our stuff to kind of get damaged in between because that will take a lot of my time too away from trying to get into a new space. All right, anybody else have any questions on that? All right, we'll move down to C then. Discuss C because of B. <laughs> Pretty much. But. So, we've talked about this, and that's why it's under old business. We've talked about this uh, need for some time, probably about a year and a half. And uh, so, what um, Earl and I have had some discussion. Um, and uh, I guess it's what we envision. Is this going to be a person that would actually do the hands-on work and overseeing? Um, you know, if there's minor repairs to be done that uh, he or she would be able to take care of it? Uh, or is it going to be somebody more in a consultant sort of way that would, um, gee, we got this problem and what's the best way of going about fixing it? Um, and uh, uh, so that's, uh, uh, I'm just I'm just looking for some suggestions so that I can figure out how best to write up the proposal. Uh, what do you envision, or what would the board envision this this position yeah. to be? Yeah, uh, I think we've seen this a couple of times, actually. I can think of three different instances where it would have been very valuable to have someone who had an understanding of these issues that could make recommendations and if you decided to go with his recommendations or her recommendation could be you know uh then you could right put to l a bid that was specific for what you wanted done and when it, at that point everybody is in agreement that that's the way we should do it and it seems that's a better way of doing business and on these bigger projects, I don't feel there's any of us that are really qualified to, you know, or knowledgeable enough, I should say, or exper and experienced in those areas to really, to be sure what we're doing is the right thing we're doing. Um, are you still talking about the library? I'm talking about the library in okay. general. A couple I, of things. Okay. I didn't know if you were talking about something else. Well, okay. we are talking about a policy, so we don't get ourselves in that kind of position, okay? And we're dealing with older buildings. There's a lot of issues there, mm -hmm. you know, that have to come under consideration, and we're not qualified for that. Right. Could we look for both in a person? Or is that, like, asking That's, too much? Well, because I just, think we need to pick one way and go. I, first of all... Um, you do have somebody on the board and maybe won't get reelected in March who has probably 20 plus years of facility experience, old buildings, new buildings, et cetera. You're not gonna find one person who's gonna be an expert in any of this. That's why you have consultants out there, you know, architects. If it's a HVAC system, mechanical engineers, and, and so on. So what you need to do is, is find some reputable people that you can go to when you have a specific problem. Do we need to hire a handyman? I don't think so. I think there's there's people around, if we work with them and get an agreement with them on what we're gonna pay them an hour, and if we've got something that has some type of priority, when we go to them to get something fixed. Yeah, but, but that, that's but for some, smaller but, stuff. And, and what I was talking about with the bigger stuff is you've got to go to the expertise for what the bigger stuff is. If it's an architectural issue, something with the roof for the insulation like you guys are doing, you work with an architect. If it's a heating system, you will find a mechanical engineer that's very good at working with older systems and you go to them for that expertise. You're not, depending on what the issue is, you've got to go seek the specific expertise it is that you want. Yeah. So, so you're not going to find one person. Well, I don't know if that's really the select board's job, Joel. Uh, you know, if we were going to hire somebody to do this, they would be the ones that would be doing it. And they would, you know, they'd have to, if they were worth their, worth their salt or whatever you want, however you want to say it, they would go ask people because they weren't really qualified to do that particular end of it and they'd get that from there. This was on a bigger project. But on this, you know, I mean, it, it's just, 
it seems like every time we do something, it, it, it doesn't come out the way it should. And because we run into other issues along the way. Uh, does, and if we were going to do this, we'd hope we had to bring a person on board that would be able to put together some kind of plan for future needs. You know, I mean, we're starting a capital reserve budget for that purpose, yeah. but we don't have a plan in place. Yeah, It'd be a combination be, of that. And yeah. it doesn't have to be one individual either. It could be several. But, you know, when we got into these situations, we'd have someone to come in and give us an unbiased opinion, and not only opinion, but uh, an idea of how we need to go about this and what issues we're going to have in, involved so we can make proper decisions. That's the thing. You know, we're not doing that now. We're kind of, you know, off the hip type. And it's it's not an effective way to spend taxpayers' money. Being reactive and not proactive. Yeah. yeah. So Yeah, and we can come up with a five year plan. Previously we used to do that. We sat right here and we'd go through and say, This is when we want to buy the next truck. This is uh when we're gonna do this project. We can say we know what we can find out what the average life is of a roof. And we can we can program a year to replace a roof in a dollar amount. We can put that together. Well, and we can if we need to, we can hire somebody. The problem can is, I, can I can I finish? Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Can I finish? Yeah, go ahead. Chair? Yeah, go ahead. You can hire a mechanical engineer to come in and look at all of our heating systems and tell us what year he thinks we need to replace them and how much. So we can hire that expertise for that particular job. Yeah. Yeah, something along that line, but, uh, you know, we talk a lot about it, but we don't ever do anything about it. And it's, well, it's please, basically, please don't yeah. use we because... I'm saying we, it's we're all involved. Well, I, I've just recently yeah. been involved, okay, so right, what I'm trying okay. to do is offer some suggestions, <laughs> okay, go ahead. And, and I don't feel yeah. I'm being listened to. All right, I'm listening to you, Joe, I am. All okay, right. so what I'm saying is we have some capability to do that if we want to sit down and take the time to do it. Well, that's fine. Uh, you know, but who's going to be responsible to make sure everything keeps moving forward? Um, I understand what you're saying because I, I've taken on the project of uh, insurance building and it, there is more than just getting quote, like I'm looking at this whole building to put it together as a presentation. I have to look at plumbers, construction, grant writing, um, compliance, uh, prioritizing projects in it, make you know what's a first stage, second stage, third stage. The, I mean, as in putting any together, even just like the rec center, you've got to have somebody who has an overall understanding of what's going to be happening. Because it, it, sometimes it feels like I think what Earl's saying is like you're putting out little fires, but you don't realize if you're doing the bigger picture any good on on these projects. And it's hard to get that bigger picture when you are overwhelmed with a lot of things that are happening, multi, multi, multiple things happening at the same time. So I could see where there would be a need for some kind of overall project manager of say a, a very needy building as I, you know, I look into a building that needs some updating and stuff. It's a wonderful building, wonderful, wonderful building. But even wonderful buildings need little TLCs and um, it can get overwhelming and you're dealing with operational running and you're dealing with well you understand what you're saying and i think so. what's important here more than anything is not how we or who does it it's doing it Yes. <laughs> well weren't we going to do have someone do an inspection on all of our buildings right. anyways to yeah. see about what yeah, that's what they I, see as an issue what yeah. we should yeah. be looking for for repairs right. what the life yep. expectancy on things. I thought we had talked about that one. We time. did, and we didn't do nothing. <laughs> we well, yes. um, I come from the school yeah. that it was going to be done this year, but you wait until your budgets are passed before you go ahead and start yeah. spending that amount of money. Did we budget money for it? Well, not really. Uh, it was a thousand dollars a building is what it was. He's already done one building, so. Who's he? Uh, Kevin Nichols. He's the lister, but he does do property inspections. And I, I mean, just to, to echo, I do think we can plan things 
in house to have a better understanding. But then, if we're delegating to a, a town employee that they're going to oversee things, you know, how how do we keep the consistency in between boards? Do we write a policy? Do we do we create some sort of operating procedure to know that you know every May we're going to go in and we're going to inspect every system in that building to make sure they're fully functioning. You know, is that going to be the responsibility of the select board or is that a, a task that we're going to pass along to um, a town employee type of thing, I think, is where where I'm curious about the connections, um, because right now, you know, I, I know we all go into our different buildings or different departments, uh, submit things to their their boards and then back to the town. Um, it, it just doesn't seem like there's a lot of consistency there. And, and as we build a capital uh, plan, you know, just who, who's going to oversee that as there has been so much turnover here? Is that going to be the responsibility of Brian? Is that going to be something additional into his job description? Um, and then creating that policy or procedure list on how that's going to be implemented you know I think when you were on the board last and you were doing the five-year plan because there's been so much change over there's been a disconnect to that that procedure so how do we get that back other than sitting here and doing it and I'm willing to put in that time and effort um, but there's just other things that I think that there's been inconsistencies on about you know putting out RFPs getting in quotes um, overseeing different projects um, I just for giggles at one point in time we had talked about um, what a job description would look like so I put just a mock job description together of what I would see a facility manager do and it doesn't have to necessarily be a, a full-time position or it could just be somebody that we contract to come in once so often to do that but I, I do think it is important as we have aging assets and to make sure that they continue to stay assets and not liabilities having that being more proactive in how we care for those things yeah then i think you guys got some great ideas and i didn't know that you know brian's saying we got someone we're paying a thousand dollars a bill in it are we comfortable with with him putting together a report for each building but we need a baseline and then we build a plan from a baseline i don't think we need to hire a new position we need a baseline of our existing facilities and create a plan to to repair those things that need repair and our HVAC system should be on some type of annual contract. The, I think for the library, the library, library is. But why, why don't we have someone on the? <coughs> I mean, we all have our little duties as well, right? The highway commissioner and all that. So why doesn't okay. one person kind kind of oversee? You know, we have somebody doing the inspections for X amount of dollars. We get a report, and then that one person on the select board says, "All right, this is what we need to do." They bring it back to the select board and discuss it with us and well go, is that an alternative going forward or not the okay the part of the no, I disagree, Cody. Uh, part of the um capital reserve fund that's just part just the beginning of the capital plan that we are mandated that we have to do so this is the first step so a lot of what's been mentioned here is going to be covered by that policy and that capital plan as we get rolling which we told Montpelier to be roughly a year, year and a half, and it'll be in place because you don't build one of those overnight. Um, so that um, is where, you know, the bottom line, and I was told this by these people in Montpelier, we can no longer do business as we have done business in the past in this town because of our size and be qualified or to be guys be compliant etc so you know we have to kind of build these policies as we go along um the i think the the most challenging part will be how to fund that policy we're starting at twenty five thousand this year but i think as we go forward and as that policy is built um, that amount's going to probably have to be increased each year to some level, uh, but we'll know that as we get rolling. But I think the baseline is to do the um, the inspections, get those done, get the baseline, and then we'll go go from there and well, start that process. What building has Kevin got done? He did go to the library. Did he give you a report? 
Not a full report, no. I was going to say, I thought the only work that he did in the library was to was see if there's that water, water or, and that, or right. moisture in the right. walls. So he will have to do that one. from. So, so he hasn't really done report. a full report. Right, a full inspection. And then, yeah. You know, I don't know if the business season, is it made for long term or is it just made for codes and things like that? What, uh, Kevin? I mean, yeah, Kevin. Would he say, well, okay, maybe look at that. by the looks of things, you would be doing this in so many years, and then after that, you'd have to do that? Or is he just looking at what's right there right now? Well, he, he takes a look at, I would say, an inspector should look at the age of everything and what needs to be done in approximate years out that it would and, need to be done. And you think that's the way he'll have it reported? Well, I'll ask him. I want to see one of his reports he did. That's I've seen one of his reports, and yeah. he does do immediate, n next, next level, level, and then a long term yeah. mm -hmm. on them. Yeah. But are, are there standards that we as a board should set, the things that we need to have, make sure that he's looking for? I, I think we should find out what it, what it is he looks at. Yeah. We should ask him what is it you what is you what is it you do? Do you look at the electrical? Do you look at the HVAC? Do you look at the plumbing? Do you look at the roof? Do you look at the windows, the walls, etc., and see what he does and what what he can give us? And if he can do that, put it into some type of time frame, we can get estimates yeah. to repair those things and put them in a plan. I'll I'll put them into the, a plan once we get them for all the buildings. I'll take the time to do that if that's what the route we want to go. If that's what if that's what he can provide us, we can get that into a. 10, 15 year plan that we can budget for. Mm -hmm. yeah. If that's the level that he can inspect that and provide a report. Well, we're going to need to do it anyways. So we got to get it done. So either, yeah. you know, I, you know what questions we have, Brian? I think our next meeting, well, maybe not our next meeting, but soon, I mean soon, because these things end up dragging on, nothing is done. Uh, you know, we got to make a decision. Well, I'll talk to Kevin tomorrow if he's in, or the next time he's He'll be in tomorrow. He'll be in tomorrow. Yeah, he's here pretty much every day. Yeah, I'll talk with him and uh, see what his schedule is like. But I would, I'll ask him for a copy of a report of yeah, a commercial okay. building he's done yeah. just so I can take a look at it. Yeah. Make sure he has experience with older buildings. Well, I'm sure he has. He does inspections for banks and okay. things of that nature. So yeah. Some of them are pretty old. Mm -hmm. Some of them are pretty old, the banks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. Uh, so I guess by the end of March, hopefully we'll have uh, something lined yeah. up or another alternative. Have a good evening. Yeah. Good night. Uh, joint discussion of joint. Uh, oh, there's one more on Old Town Business. I'll be Oh, that's right. LBRT. Yeah, that's it. You get a uh yeah yeah okay go ahead joe just real quick the state uh, sent us a letter that they did give us the additional funds we agreed and we went through the budget process to put aside in, in hopes that they would and they did one hundred thirty three thousand one hundred ninety seven dollars in additional funds um the right away work the town attorney did do that and has provided a letter to the state so that hurdle has been covered the design uh, expect the final design at the end of this month to be provided to us so we can take a good look at it. It's like 170 pages of specification. And that's how crazy this is for a project that is on a half acre. But that's what it's required when it's federal money. But we will get that design so we can take a look at it. Um, I'm going to talk with Kevin if the board's okay with it because we agreed that we were going to do the tree and stump removal. I know most of the trees are down and that's probably why the chainsaw isn't working right now because um, I did see they cut yeah. some more trees yeah. recently but we need to try to get by the end of the March to get that the, the remaining trees down and get that cleaned up and uh, still proceeding with the uh, plans to get construction going uh, later this summer. Because they, they still got environmental paperwork that April is uh, when that is supposed to be completed, the review of it. You got a bid date yet? No, because we got to get the final. And then they have to have that environmental before they will let the fund, before they will let us go out and do the actual bid. So I do not have that yet. Wow. It's, it's, it's crazy because he told me what the state requires for an inspector on a project of that size. 
you know, again, we're doing pavement, basic pavement and, and site work, but that's what we got to do. I'll keep you posted. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Joel. Discussion of joint informational meeting, February 26th. Okay, well, that's just a little prep, I guess. Um, this will be meeting jointly. It's a board meeting, so the chair will have to call the board to, to order. Now, who's going? We'll have the PowerPoint. Assuming I get it done, my <coughs> will. Assuming. Uh, <laughs> uh, if I have to work Saturday, I will. Um, the, uh, uh, who, who's going to do the explanation? Well, the PowerPoint, I, I get Ryan, you should do it because uh, you're writing it. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I don't mind doing it. I mean, I don't have uh, a problem answering questions I, and stuff okay. like that, but because I just don't do PowerPoints. Okay. So, so you know, I, that's something I do very I will, well, anyways. I will do it. And then any questions? Uh, if you, yeah. Whoever on the board will yeah. um, Whoever on the board can answer. Answer. <laughs> Um, I'll, and uh, we'll probably be first ones up, like, and then the village. Yeah, because the village has got a public hearing as well. They got their their business to attend to, but then they have a public hearing on the bond vote beside. So, so it'll be separate. Yeah, that night. So I'd say we should probably go first, and then they can have the rest of the evening. Be a long night. Well. How's the evening? Probably would be. I you know I'm not planning on getting out too early with that way. <laughs> uh, but that's all I wanted. Just a discussion of the joint informational meeting. It starts at seven o'clock at the village office. Now there's the chili cook-off prior to the meeting. Well, I guess we had a few years ago, and they stopped because of COVID. But uh, was, uh, that's uh, that's going to happen. What time does that start? Nicole? Six p.m. Six p.m. So they have an hour to eat a lot of children. Yes, come Beautiful. come hungry. Get, get it well digested. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yes. Uh, so uh, that that's something to look forward to, um, and then um, we will uh, you know say our piece, and then. Uh, um, uh, the PowerPoint and uh, open it up to questions. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. I will say in the town report, again, sometimes so help me, it's doomed. Um, <laughs> the uh, the town budget for the library was omitted in the town report. I didn't notice that until today. Uh, and uh, about four of us at least read that town report, proofreading it, and never picked up on it. So, and, uh, uh, but, so, we're waiting for them so there's an in, there'll be an insert in the town report, and did you put it up on the website and social yes. media? Yes, Yeah. So, um, so we'll just. Uh, oh, I'll give it to you. I got one in the morning. I'll do it. Um, so we'll, uh, you know, it was a I resident that brought that to my attention because he was he had some questions on different things, and that was the first one. So. so um, so, anyways, anybody who's watching uh, or will see this, so we apologize for the error as an oversight. And uh, but there will be an insert. And it's also it will be up on the website, social media, as well as available here at the town office. So if, uh, we certainly and we can email it to you if you wish. You can give the office a call. Um, Hold on, Brian. Yep. I would like to thank you, Christina, Kathy. For all, yes, and Tanya, uh, for all the work you guys did to put this together, uh, the, the selectman's report is excellent. You know, very informative, uh, straightforward, and uh, very transparent. Uh, you guys did a hell of a job. You deserve a hand. Um, well, thank you. Um, and uh, so we'll, uh, after Monday night, we'll coast into... Town meeting. <laughs> Hope for <Woo>. the best. <laughs> okay, community and economic development. Uh, I think. Oh, 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 there we go. <laughs> All right, you hit me that time. Okay. Um, so I, I just wanted to share um, a little bit with you guys because I do attend the Northwest Regional Planning Commission as a representative for the town of Swanton. Um, we've two uh, the meetings I've attended recently. Um, I just was. I, I don't know, I always leave feeling warm fuzzies on the inside, so I wanted to bring some of that back 
to you um, as a board um, because I'm grateful for that opportunity. The first was our, our meeting in January. We had a really phenomenal presentation, I felt, um, by the Vermont Futures Project, and it was aimed at a lot of the, the things that Vermont as a whole are seeing as challenges. Um, and, and some of them were very relatable to us here in Swanton, um, such as the housing crisis, obviously, but also um, just preparing uh, for the deficit in workforce um, because we are such an aging population, especially here in this community, um, that we're really uh, lacking as far as employees for uh, jobs. We're about 7,000 employees short to fill the jobs that are vacant here in the state of Vermont. Uh, many of them here just within our own town, as I've heard from um, different businesses around the community that are still struggling to em to employ people. Um, and that's including our school district as well. They're still struggling to fill all those empty spots. Um, one of the things that I thought was really um, fantastic was the way the Northwest Regional Planning um, works with our agricultural partners through their Healthy Roots Collaborative. Um, and if you're not familiar with that, I, I really suggest everybody to take a look at that. Um, they're doing some really great things to, to expand agriculture, not only to help with our food insecure populations, but to really expand on opportunities in agro-tourism. And I've spoken to several different community members um, that have interest in starting um, businesses in Swanton that would bode to agro-tourism. Um, and I think that could be a, a very interesting way to help boost economic growth within our community. Um, and so I, I just wanted to share that with you. Also, um, Harold Garrett, who is another member from the town of Swanton, um, is on the TAC Commission. Um, and he um, had a lot of really interesting things to say. I think that the board should request for him to come in and give a report of the things that are going on for transportation in our community as, as we look at the projects out in the Southern Growth, Growth District, um, and especially on that Route 207 with other um, complaints that we've had with the school bus stop, they might be an avenue or a resource to help build some traffic calming or some different other avenues to make sure that residents on that piece of road are are you know their interests are looked at so i just wanted to to share that back and then the second meeting i went to was um, the a franklin grand isle county select board covenant and that was with um, different select board members through franklin and grand isle county as well as the leagues of cities of towns and the northwest regional planning commission um, and we just discussed a lot of the challenges and opportunities that that are happening um, with the lack of capacity, um, definitely with the uh, infrastructure and the high costs with everything that comes along with infrastructure, um, but also with engagement and volunteerism. And those, I think, are things that uh, we're really focused on in our community and and. Um, I felt really good to, to sit at the table and share all of those, all our successes in those aspects as far as engagement and volunteerism. So I just wanted to share with you that I'm, I'm spreading the good word of Swanton out there. Um, one of the things that they did talk about um, in, in great length, and I hope the conversation can continue into the new year, is looking at that local option tax. Um, a lot of communities have found great benefit in that, and that has helped significantly in building um, a capital plan or capital reserve for infrastructure. Um, and, I, and I really think that that's something that we need to take a look at. Um, and then just another thing that I want to remark is um, we are very lucky to have such responsible and dedicated clerks in our community. And I can't thank them enough for all that you do for us. So thank you. That's all I have. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think have, uh, having Harold come before, and, you know, give us some ideas or maybe some things that we can ask the state to do on 207. I mean, you know, we got the scoping project going forward, uh, you know. But it would, you know, it would also be nice to, to hear where they're at with that yeah. traffic study for yeah. Bushy Road. 
you know, they said that they would be starting that in December and it's now February. Yeah. So definitely yeah. following up need with a, that. Definitely need an update on that. Yeah. Yeah. So in the, in the Regional Planning Commission is a, a very valuable resource, but you need to participate and thank you for your service to doing it. Because if you weren't there, those things, they, they go somewhere else. That's, that's the way it is. Um, I, I think very there's, important. I think there's lots of opportunities yeah. for us to, to continue to use them as a resource moving into the future. Yeah. So. I will uh, just follow up. Uh, I did uh, send VTrans a request for a speed study on Route 207. So they've got that. And that takes a while. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. And then if they're going to lower the speed limit, that takes even a little bit longer. Yeah. Uh, because there's a yeah. panel of three that make that decision, and yeah. that's the the chair of the transportation, <coughs> the uh, secretary of the agency of transportation, the commissioner of the Department of Motor Vehicles, and the commissioner of the Department of Public Safety, or their designees meet and they decide whether the speed limit on a state highway gets lowered um, or increased. Yeah. Uh, I did also request the uh, school bus stop ahead signs be placed at those intersections. Uh, that they seem to be working on. They wrote me this morning and said that uh, they needed uh, the contact information at the school as well as the school bus contractor so they can precisely pinpoint, even though I had a map and I <laughs> pinpointed where it was, but they need to speak to them to pinpoint it. So uh, that's being worked on. So. Okay. Is Mr. Garrett a state employee? No. 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 no, no. So would we want the district manager to come in to talk about 207 and issues on 207? I mean, it, I that's mean, the one who actually is going to... Yes, but the, the TAC is also the transportation, the, nor the Northwest Regional Planning. He is the commissioner for the TAC. And so I, he has a lot more information, not just about what regional planning is doing um, and interests for okay. Swan. Yep. That's why I recommended him. And he had also, you know, in, and I, I don't know that he knew that I was there, um, but I was. And he was like, well, we need more representation for Swan. And I was like, hi, I'm, I'm right here. You know, Hi. Um, so I just think it'd be you know great to invite him to the table just to discuss what his work is, as he is a representative of our board there as well. Uh, I, I did. The way that system works is the, the TAC makes a recommendation to the Regional Planning Commission, and the Regional Planning Commission makes a rec recommendation to the Agency of Transportation and that has a lot of weight on their final decision. Okay. I did talk to, I did send a request to TAC several years ago to certainly take a look at the intersection of Woods Hill Road and Route 207 because I had gotten information from the state police that that's on Route 207. Over 55% of all accidents on Route 207 happen at that intersection. Yeah. And sure they, nothing, do. they haven't done anything and the accidents are still happening. <laughs> so, uh, might be something else too to talk about. Well, that's something you could we could be telling Harold and Harold that's where it all starts, those issues, because uh, I mean they were gonna fix the jaw on the old Mississippi Day Bridge. And that probably would have happened if it wasn't for people getting involved and getting the region plan, regional planning commission involved and getting the ear of the Secretary of Transportation. That's how it got changed. I just, he is representation of this board, so yeah, I feel yeah, that he yeah. should come yeah. and, and regularly yeah. conversate with at least the board. And the concerns that we have, you know, whether it's a 78 project, whatever, we can share them with him. Talking about the 78 project, did everybody see the public notice from the Corps of Engineers for the 78 project? They're looking for feedback. I found it on the board up front. I yeah, this is, is something valuable for us to look at. And if we have any suggestions or comments that this is something that we should pass along our thoughts to them. That's what you're gonna do. I, I've got my own comments submitted, yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> I try that road every day. Well, you mean I can take it home and read it? You certainly can. All right. Okay, so community and economic development is the final thing we have on the list, but I don't think we're going to have much of a discussion. We already did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we already did. Yeah, we already yes. did. And, uh, but there's something else I'm working on, which we'll, I'll get back in touch. You're not? Next meeting. Ne next meeting, okay. Or, or whenever, but yeah. in the future. In the future. Just as we're on that topic real quick, this is something that I found um, 
it, something that Burlington did, um, and it's just a, a just a guide on community um, and economic development, how to start a business here. Um, I just wanted to share this with anybody that's interested because I think it could be uh, quite useful for small business owners starting a business here in Swanton to have some sort of even one pager outlining some of the information in that book, um, as, as I think it could also put some of our entrepreneurs in, you know, give them the correct information. Yeah, that'd be something that'd be really nice on our website. It would be. It was a one-page or two-page thing. Not Point a, of contact. And yeah. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. yeah. It's that'd got some zoning information, just some really FA, um, frequently asked questions, you know, banks and lenders in the community, things that you would do for startup within the state. Um, and we could put a swap and touch on it, I'm sure. But I thought it'd be really a, a neat idea. Well, do you want to try to come up with something? I mean, work with Brian to come up with something? I happily can. Yeah, I think I'd be highly appropriate. Mm. You gotta have, you gotta market yourself. I mean, you, know, you don't, you know, go somewhere else. Some of them should, really but good. I'm gonna <laughs> keep the ones we like. Uh, any correspondence? No. Mm -hmm. Public comment. Uh, uh, upcoming event. If you want to do it? Sure. Thursday, February twenty second, twenty twenty four. The DRB is meeting at six p.m. here at the town offices. Monday, February 26, 2024, will be the joint town and village informational meeting at seven p.m. at the municipal complex. Um, for Swanton Village right on 1st Street. Wednesday, February 28th, 2024, will be the Planning Commission meeting at 6.30 here in the town office. Town meeting day, March 5th, 2024. Our offices are closed because the polls are open at the Village Complex, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Please remember to go out and vote. Um, if you have not done so and you need to do so, please request your absentee ballot from your favorite town clerk. Wednesday, March 6, 2024, will be the special organizational select board meeting here at the town offices at 6 p.m. So uh, thank you very much, Nicole. I just want to add that I hope people do come to the informational meeting. Uh, I know there's a lot of, especially police issues, created quite a bit of controversy. Really get out. We'd like to hear what you have to say. Really, it's important that you be there. Uh, so we make the proper decisions going down the road. Uh, issues not going to go away for sure, and also we enjoy seeing it. So the last week, go. chili contest too, it starts at 6 oh, yeah. p.m. The yeah. act of do not forget the chili contest that starts at 6 p.m. So it'll be something to eat too, of, and I hope they don't have any fear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Javon, go ahead. Hi, everyone. Um, I just wanted to add um, to your upcoming events um, February 27, uh, 27th. At 7 p.m., Missisquoi Valley School District um, is going to have an informational meeting on the budget for town meeting day. It's in the MVU library. Thanks for that. Thank you. That's important. You're welcome. Okay, we have, we have executive session tonight, apparently. Uh, yes, we do. Yes, I asked for that. Okay, all right. Then somebody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll move that we sign that we enter executive session for the select board to receive confidential real estate information for which premature disclosure of it to the general public would clearly place the select board and others at substantial disadvantage. I second that. Okay, motion to be and seconded that we enter executive session. All those in favor? Aye. That was weird. I moved it. Go ahead, Joel. Sorry. No. <laughs> Go ahead. I move that based on our just made findings that premature disclosure would place the select board and others at a substantial disadvantage with enter executive session. Second that. All right. Motion made and seconded. Uh, to go back in the executive session. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion carried. So we now are in the executive session. You're right. That all? It is. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion. Yeah. Hey. Thank you. 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 Thank you
right. Tony made the motion, and then uh, Joel seconded the uh, exit executive session. All those in favor? Aye. All right. No action taken. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So I'll second. All right. Joel moved, and Cody seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned.